Okay, we're going to start related rates. Mm -hmm. You have a packet. I'll get you a, a practice packet too. For finals, you have a, um, a packet that reviews the topics. You go back into your notes and, and fill that out. And then we'll get you practice problems as well. You have access to all the AP questions. They are online, including the multiple choice. So you just have to look at the multiple choice and make a decision as to you know, which ones are appropriate. And the solutions are all there, too. OK. We're going to do related rates today. And related rates, have, they have not been on the exam as a free response question for several years. We really think they're going to be on this year. We thought last year didn't happen. So I think it very well could be. Now, this problem here that we're going to do first would be something like what would be on your multiple choice test. Even though it looks complicated, it's not that complicated. Now, what this is happening is we're going to relate rates. And what is a rate? It's a ratio. In this case, it's going to be a derivative. That is a rate. So we're going to do rates of change. We're going to look at ratios of two changes. And in the very last page of this handout, you have the directions on what to do in terms of how to do these problems. It's a lot like the max-min problems, but I think you'll find them a little bit easier. A small balloon is released at a point 150 feet away from an observer. Let's just look at one color. Let's look at the blue one. If the balloon goes straight up at a rate of 8 feet per second, we're not going to factor in any wind, how fast is the distance from the balloon to the observer increasing when the balloon is 50 feet high? Well, first I read the question. Nope. Well, we're going to label this diagram with everything we know. And let's focus on just the blue balloon so you're seeing it changing in time. So the blue balloon is just going up. Or pick a color of your choice. Okay, the balloon is released here at a point 150 feet away from the observer. So we're going to label the diagram things that don't change, things that are constant in time. Do you have a hand up? That's not constant. But the distance is not constant. It says, if the balloon goes up at a rate of 8 feet per second, they gave this to us. We'll have to figure out what it is. Now, on the exam, you really get a point for something equivalent to this, 8 feet per second. We'll have to figure out what that is. It's a change in something. It says, how fast is the distance from the balloon? So if the balloon is here, here's the blue balloon. See how this distance is changing? And then up here, it's up here. OK? So this distance is changing. It is not constant. What would you like to label this length? Yeah. And why? I'd not D. It's not 50, because it's always changing. You can't put in the constant. This is like taking a picture with your camera. You want to take just a quick snapshot. And we're going to take a picture here. And I'll put in, what do you want to call it, H? Y. OK, call it Y. Then what do you want to call this distance? Because that's what's changing. Uh, I don't like X. Z. OK. Z. I'll pull that tri triangle out. At a particular instant, we're going to take our camera and take a picture. And Y and Z are changing in time. Now, what is the 8 feet per second? Adam? Grant, what's the 8 feet per second? Put your phones away, please. Put your phones away, please. Derivative of what? Y. Good. This is the change in Y. As what changes? Seconds is a measure of what? Time. These are rates of change. We're talking about velocities here. How does the height change, dy dt, as time changes? OK. What is it I want to find? How fast is the distance from the balloon to the observer? Grant, what is it I want to find? How fast is the distance from the balloon? Notice it's here. 
and then it's here, and then it's here, and it's here. So this distance is getting a lot larger, isn't it? So what is that? Let's see what. The distance is z, so this is dz dt. That's what I'd like to find. And then when the balloon is 50 feet high. What's 50 feet equal to? Why? And they're called related rates, Adam, because there's a relationship between z and y. When I do these problems, this tells me what I want to relate. I want a relationship between z and y. So if you look at this picture here, what's that relationship? Good old geometry. Right? What is it? I don't have any angles, just y and z. We're trying to find y, right? We're trying to find the change in z. No, we have the derivative of y, don't we? Thank you. Who was that back there? Pythagorean theorem. Thank you. Okay. Ready? 150 squared plus y squared equals z squared. They won't give you Pythagorean's theorem. They expect you to know that. But they will give you some volume formulas if it's a volume equation. Now, I don't want to square root that and solve for z. That's just too hard. It's much easier to take the derivative implicitly. And let's take the derivative with respect to what? No. That's time, isn't it? We'll do that side, and we'll do this side. So what's the derivative of 150 squared? Nicole? Now it's zero. You guys fall into that trap. You want to take the derivative of 150 squared, but it's a constant. So that's zero plus. Now, careful, it's with respect to time. So the outside function is the squaring, then times the derivative of the inside function, which is dy dt. Should be doing it with me. Equals, now you take the derivative of this, of z squared, it's 2z times what? No, what's the inside function? Z, dz dt. What do you do with the 2s? I'd like to get it looking nicer. Just divide by 2. They'll cancel out. So I have y times dy dt equals z times dz dt. And I like to put in what I know. Now is when you put in the constants. So what is it I know? Do I know anything? Yeah. I know dy dt is 8. Where did you get the x? Feet per second. I'm only going to do the units on this one. It gets too complicated. It's z times dz dt. And I want to find dz dt. So I need to know what? Y equals 50. Ah, y equals 50. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. But I don't know. Oh, not. Well, we can find z. We don't know z. And this is 50 feet. Okay, so we got to find z. Okay, so I have to move you. Okay. So this is 150, and this is 50, and then this is z. Now I'm going to do a little trick here because I don't have my calculator handy. What I'm going to do is use the principle of the reduced triangle. I'm going to draw another triangle that's 150th of the side of the size of this. So I could divide by 50, divide by 50 to get a new triangle. They're similar because I can work with these numbers easier. What's this going to? One. I'm going to come back to it. Hang on. And three. What's the side of my new triangle? Square root of what? 1 squared plus 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 10. Now, to get back 
to z, because this was also divided by 50 to get that, so you could actually write an equation if you want, but I can just do it. To get back to the big one, I have to multiply by 50, wouldn't I? So this is 50 times the square root of 10. Doesn't have a calculator. I don't care. Remember, we don't care about the decimals. If you are going to go to decimals, which you certainly can do, but you must keep them all throughout the whole problem and only round at the end. Okay, so what do we got here? I've got 50 feet times 8 feet per second equals 50 square root of 10 feet times dz dt. What's going to happen to just the single feet here? They're going to cancel. And so you, I hope you can see that the resulting answer will have feet per second in it. I'm going to divide by 50 square root of 10 and divide by 50 square root of 10. Or else we'll cancel out now. Else we'll cancel. Now, if it's multiple choice, you're going to have to find the answers. You're going to have to simplify. If it's free response, well, you can just leave it. What cancels here, though? Adam? Be, where's your handout? Well, you should be doing these problems with me. How come it's empty? Yeah, you can't watch math. You need to do math. So I'm left with 8 divided by the square root of 10 feet per second equals dz dt. It's perfectly fine. Not too bad. What is it I wanted to find? I wanted to find dz dt. I did. That is the actual value, 50 square root of 10. At that instant, only at that instant, when h gets to be a different height, then it won't be that anymore. Because we're trying to find out how fast it's changing. You can't put the constants in in the beginning. You've got to do it always at the end. Do what? I did, right here. There's 8 divided by 50 square root of 10. It doesn't matter. This is all multiplication and division. Okay, you guys. You ready? Try the next one. I have the smart board from the other class. It's not a big deal. Now, you guys, on the last page, it gives you the step-by-step -step instructions. Read the problem. Draw a diagram. Label your diagram with quantities that don't change. Give variable names to those things that do change. Find the find given and when, and there may be some tweaks to that a little bit sometimes. And then here's the thing. Write an equation relating those quantities from step five. So you look at the find and the given, and that's what you do. Grant? So we're going to relate the items you've already got your variables in here. If necessary, read yourself of unwanted variables. Sometimes that's a trick. You'll be given another equation, or you will use a known fact, or you'll use geometry, such as Pythagorean's theorem or similar triangles. Simplify your equation before you differentiate. If you don't, you're going to have to use the product or the quotient rule. It's going to be ugly. And you'll probably forget to do that. So make sure you always have it in simplest form, then differentiate. And after you're done differentiating, then put in the one value. So have that handy when you're working on the problems. We're going to do this one. This is a cistern. Water is pouring into a conical cistern. What's a cistern? You guys know? Oh. That's a cone. You're right. It's a well. When I lived on my farm, I had a cistern and it collected water. But then it dried up, so it didn't work for me. But I, now, that was the best I could do, for <laughs> having water going into the cone. I couldn't find a nice picture, but the water's going in here. So you're filling it up. And you know that if you fill it up in the very beginning, it's going in faster 
or well, the height's changing pretty fast and it starts slowing down as this gets wider. You guys all are aware of that. Okay, water's pouring in at a rate of 8 cubic feet per minute. And there's a hint in that. If the height of the cistern is 12 feet, so that's 12 feet, and the radius of the circular opening is 6 feet. Is that okay? How fast is the water level rising when the water is 4 feet deep? So we're going to take a picture of this again. It's moving. You're putting water into this. I want to know how fast it's rising. Okay, what would you like to call that length? How about H for height? <laughs> I win. I'm at the board. <laughs> what do you want to call? Now, if the height's changing, what's happening to the radius? Is that changing? What do you want to call that? R. You could use X and Y. Okay. Let's label some things. This 8 cubic feet per minute. What is cubic feet? A measure of what? Volume. So guess what this is? Which derivative is this, Grant? No, it's volume. It's the what? The VDT. You should be writing this down. Question? And it says, how fast is the water level rising? What are they asking for you to find? The change in the H, right? I want to find the HDT when the water is four feet deep. What's four feet? And the secret to doing these problems, it fails once in a while, but pretty much this is the secret. You want to relate H and V. I need a formula that relates those. And V represents the volume of a cone. Does anybody remember what the volume of a cone is? Um, no, it's one third. One third the area of the base, pi r squared, times h. Okay. Now, if I want to take the derivative of that, I would have to use the product rule. Because r is changing and h is changing. And I'd have to get a DRDT. I don't know anything about DRDT. I just have DHDT and DVDT. I want to get rid of the R's. So we're going to rid ourselves of R. And now we have to use some geometry. And if I draw this whole thing here, I'm going to do it in green, and then I'm going to pull it out. There's your photograph. This is H. This is R. This whole height is 12. And the big radius is 6. Whoops, I didn't mean to grab that. How did that happen? You guys did it. <laughs> okay, guys. Grant, what, what's the relationship there? Yeah, you're messing this up. <laughs> Okay, what's the relationship here? What's true about the triangles? I know it's been a couple years. They're similar. They're similar triangles. So what's the proportion going to be? 6 is to R as 12 is to H. Some people want to put in H right now. No, you can't do that. You have to have everything in terms of the variable. Take the derivative and then put in h. Because if you put in h now, r is a constant. And r is not constant, is it? No, look at the radius here. The radius here, here, and once at the top, it's 6 feet. So r is not constant. And so how do we solve that for r? Okay, so we go 6 times h equals 12 times r. Divide by 12, because r is the one I want to get rid of. r is equal to h over 2. I, can, I only want one variable, just like the max-min problems. I don't want to have variables on both, uh, two variables here. 
So I'm going to take that and put that right in there for R, and I'm going to simplify it. If you don't simplify it, you're going to get into a lot of trouble. So we always simplify. And the only way you're going to get good at this is to do the homework and get practice, so you're feeling comfortable with it. So it's one-third pi. It's R squared times H. And R is H over 2. We shouldn't have a problem simplifying, but I'm finding out that we have a little problem simplifying. So we'll go through this slowly. So volume equals one third times pi. What is h over two squared? h squared over four times h. Can you simplify that even more? So I get pi. How about the numbers? Three times four gives you what? Twelve h cubed. Now it's a lot easier. I just multiplied all these together. Three and four in the denominator. So if you have A over B times C over D, you get AC over BD. And now we'll take the derivative with respect to time. Now, I don't want to use the quotient rule. This is a constant. So let's just pull the operator right through there. And for some reason, you think of pi as a variable. It's not. It's 3.14, so it's approximately 1 fourth. Now, you don't have to. You could use the product rule, but the derivative of pi over 12 is 0. Remember, we've always taken these constants and ignored them. So it's equal to pi over 12. We're just going to ignore it. It's still there, but we're just going to ignore it. And take the derivative of h cubed. What is that? 3h squared, chain rule, that's the, that's the derivative of the power function, times the derivative of h with respect to time. And then can we simplify that? Can I divide 3 into 3, which is 1, and 3 into 12 is 4? So what's the question? What was the question? Let me sit. Wait, I can't hear you. What? I didn't. I ignored it. Because if you don't, if you don't want to ignore it, then you have to do the derivative with respect to time of was it pi over twelve times h cubed? Well, that would be pi over twelve times three h squared the h dt plus h cubed times the derivative of pi over 12. And that's 0. Remember, we, we can always pass a constant through the derivative operator. I, yeah, I think we'd forget, but we have. OK, going back to this, I know some stuff. Do I know dv dt? I think I do. It's h. So it's 8 equals pi over 4 times h. What's h? Oh, if you did this part here, is 8. I don't, I don't know dhdt. I'm going to find it. But h is 4. We have an equation. h is 4 times dhdt. Can you solve that for dhdt? No? You're going to have pi in the answer. That's OK. A equals pi over 4. What's 4 squared? 16 times dh dt. Can you reduce the 4 and the 16? Yes. OK, if you're using calculators you know, on things like this, that's why you don't remember how to do this. You need to be doing some things by hand. There are a lot of schools, colleges, that won't let you use a calculator in calculus class. Notre Dame, Yale, University of Colorado, uh, the School of Mines. <laughs> Yale, they don't let them use a calculator at all in anything. OK, 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 16 how many times? 4. This is, you guys, this is just arithmetic. 
Now, how do you solve for dHdt? <laughs> Divide by 4 pi. Do you have to reduce this? Well, if it's multiple choice, you might have to. If it's free response, that answer is good. What is 8 divided by 4 pi? Yeah, this goes in once, goes in twice, or 2 over pi. Okay. Does this make sense? <laughs> Not too bad. And what do we do with the HDT? That is the HDT. Yeah. What, what do we do with that? Its value is 2 over pi. That's what you were. That's what they asked you to find. How fast is that distance increasing? Now, by the way, it's positive. Pardon? Two over pi. Hey, guys. Shh. This is the rate at which the height is changing. It's positive, which means the height's increasing. If the height were decreasing, you would make it negative. It would come out negative because the radius would be negative. So, yes, there are signs to our derivatives here. Oh, yeah, I can. Example three, assuming a soap bubble retains its spherical shape, as it expands, how fast is the radius increasing? Well, I'm going to draw my radius. There's R. Can't see it very well. When its radius is two inches, if the air is blown into it at the rate of four cubic inches per second, what formula do you think you need to know for this? Volume of a sphere. Does anybody know that? Oh, you know this. this is excellent. Okay, I'm going to let you guys try it. And the guys who have the iPad are going to be doing it for us. Yes. Because this is a constant, what would the derivative of this be? So you can't do this. Four thirds pi r cubed, take the derivative, so it's dv dt equals 4 thirds pi, what's the derivative of r cubed? 3 r squared times dr dt. You know what r is, what's r? You know dv dt, is that 4? Substitute them in and it's all for dr dt. You should get 1 over 4 pi. Did you guys get that? No, I think everybody did, didn't they? Okay. That's the direction. Let's do problem 1 off the worksheet together. Because this one has a little trick to it. Now, on the worksheet, you can do it all if you want. Wouldn't hurt you. Well, we're going to do 1 through 6 and number 10. Okay. Two men start walking from the same point. You doing something to my iPad? No. Just don't touch it. I don't know what you did. Yes. Don't. I want that. Yeah, you're messing it up, and I'm not going to get through this then. Yes. Will you not mess it up? Yeah. I missed you guys entirely. <laughs> Where are my extras? Oh. No? Thank you. Yeah, they didn't. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, what are you guys doing to my, what did they do to my, what did you do? I know. 
Yeah, I know, but if I do that, we'll lose everything we did. It wasn't <laughs> Okay, let's see if I can draw. Okay. Okay. Two men start walking from the same point. One goes north at a rate of four miles per hour, and the other goes east at a rate of five miles per hour. How fast is the distance between them changing after eight hours? This is a snapshot. These are both changing. I'm not be able to do that. That's why I wanted to use those. But whatever. Later on, this is gonna, this guy's going to be over here. This guy's going to be here. What happens to the distance distance between them? It gets bigger. Okay, one's going north, one's going east. Fine. Given. And when? Okay, one's going north at a rate of four miles per hour. What would you like to label the north north direction? And actually, it's kind of good. And then the east direction is east. Okay. And what about the diagonal? H. H. Okay. So it says one is walking north at a rate of four miles per hour. What is that? Change in what? Which letter? The change in he's going north. He's going north. The end. <laughs> Okay, and how fast, uh, let's see, he's going east at 5 miles per hour. Okay, what's that one? The E dt. And I want to find how fast the distance between them is changing. So it's the H dt. When? Eight hours later, right? T equals H. And actually, we don't need calculus to do the problem, but we're going to do the calculus. Because they're walking at a constant rate of change. So you really don't need the calculus to do it, but that's OK. What are we going to relate? We look right here in the fine and the given. I want to relate H, N, and E. Don't square root it. It's icky. I have to relate H, N, and E. Look at your picture. Pythagorean theorem. Mm -hmm. If you were given angles, you'd be doing angles. But n squared plus e squared equals h squared. All three sides are changing. So then what are we going to do? We're not going to plug in these values. We, don't, we can't even plug them in because those are derivatives. So let's take the derivative of everything with respect to time. You could take the derivative with respect to anything you'd like. But the only one that's going to work for me is with respect to time. What's the derivative of n squared? 2n times the n dt plus the derivative of e squared, the e dt, 2h times the h dt. I don't like all those two, so guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of them. Because there's a 2 in every term, so I can do that. Now, I don't know what n is, do I? I do, I do know the n dt. I have to go up because I forgot what it was. The n dt was 4. So it's n times 4 plus e, I don't know e either, times the e dt, which is 5, equals h, which I don't know that either, and I don't know dh dt. But you know what? I know how fast they're walking. And I know they're going to walk for eight hours. So if you walk for eight hours and you are traveling at four miles per hour, how far have you gone? 32 miles. And if you're going east at five miles per hour for eight hours, you've gone how many? 40. 40. <laughs> I don't know about you, but have you ever walked that far? I've walked 30 miles. It was a walk for mankind. It took all day. My feet were killing me. <laughs> okay, so we need to find H. So guess what? We're going to do that principle of the reduced triangle again. What goes into 32 and 40? Bigger. 8. 
So my other, tr my reduced triangle, which is not reduced, but that's okay. It's uh, 8 and 32 goes how many times? 4, 5, square root of. Adam, what's that going to give me? 16 plus 25 is 41. Now, don't forget, you got to go back to the other triangle, so you have to multiply it back by 8. So it's 8 square root of 41, and we can put all of our numbers in here. So let's see. N was 32, right? So 32 times 4 plus E was 40 times 5 equals, and that was the ugly number, H was 8 times the square root of 41. Yes. I could use a calculator and find it. I don't care. I just reduced the triangle. I didn't want to square 32 and square 40 and had to try to figure out what the perfect radical was. I'm not saying that right, but how to simplify that. I didn't want to do it. And I did this problem, and then I went back to the original. Right. And then you put in the HDT here, and you just have to do the arithmetic. Okay, what are you going to do for homework? One through six, which we did once, and number ten. Those are relevant problems. Yes, it should be online. I'll double check. Sorry I hadn't gotten the videos up. <laughs>